Hey guys, I'm Max 19 welcome back to another tryout. Today's tryout is on Splatoon 3. Now this was a game that I wasn't really like planning on buying, and you know, I've never really played Splatoon before, but uh, for some reason I was just like, sure, I kind of want to play that. I have a friend who plays Splatoon, the same friend who recommends all sorts of things to me, and so I was like, yeah, I'll buy Splatoon so I can check that out, because again, I never played it. I missed the Wii U entirely, and I didn't get Splatoon 2, so it was like, my, this is as good a time as any to jump in on Splatoon, and I figured it's probably going to have good player counts and whatnot, so it's like, yeah, let's, let's try Splatoon. So I ended up doing that. I do know, like, the aesthetics of it and, you know, the idols and all, like, the, the outward stuff you can experience without really having to play the games. You know, I know about Pearl and Marina from Splatoon 2 and Callie and Marie from Splatoon 1 and whatnot. So, like, I know some stuff here and there, but, like, I've not played the games. I don't really know how they play, and that's sort of the part that if you're going to buy a game to play it, you're going to care about the gameplay, at least at some amount. So that's mostly what I'm going to talk about because, like, you can experience that other stuff just by sort of looking at it. You know, you can listen to the music and you know if you like the music. You look at it visually and you know if you like the visuals. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. So far, I've played, like, four to six hours. I don't know exactly how much I didn't count. I have recorded, like, four hours-ish, I think. And then I've played some when I wasn't recording as well. So played a little bit, mostly played Turf War and Salmon Run, and I don't have enough levels to do Anarchy Battle, so I don't know about any of those other modes. And I've played a couple of the missions in the single player mode, but I didn't get very far into it. Just sort of checking out like, is this different enough to really focus on? And I really don't think that the, even the game really intends you to focus on it that much. It's very much, I don't say it's an afterthought, but it's very much secondary to the multiplayer stuff. Because in fact, even like when you're starting a game, they're like, hey, go do multiplayer. There's a weird guy over there looking at you. Probably come back and check that out at some point, but multiplayer first. So it's like, that's sort of the core stuff. And I mean, it all plays within the same realm. Like it's not like wildly different, but you know, that's, that's where it is. So at this point in my life, I've probably played just about every popular shooter franchise that has existed. You know, I played some Medal of Honor, I've played Call of Duty, Hot Halo, I've played a bunch of Fortnite now, I've played Gears of War, you know, I've played basically everything that the shooter genre has to offer for the most part. So now here I am, I've finally gotten around to Splatoon. And Splatoon is very unique because it has a different sort of central conflict than most shooter games where you're just trying to shoot other person and in Splatoon it's more like shoot the ground you do a lot of shooting the ground in Splatoon to get points at least in turf war even outside of turf war you do a lot of shooting the ground because that having your color ink on the ground allows you to traverse more swiftly and, and deftly and stuff like that so there's a lot of benefits to covering the ground in your team's ink, your color of ink. And that's just not a, a thing that's in other shooters, really. It's a very unique thing, but that really changes the way that you play the game. You know, you, you are doing something very different because the objective is different, and the way that you, you know, approach those objectives are different. And that just leads to a different experience. And I think that Splatoon is pretty cool with how it is different. It just doesn't like feel the same as any other shooter. And there's a couple other reasons for that. One of those reasons is the gyro controls that are sort of the way that you're intended to play. It's the, the way that it's set up default is to use gyro controls. And it's gonna take a bit if like you haven't done that before it's gonna take a bit to fig to get used to how that feels because rather than like using the gyro controls for like very very precise I mean like I use gyro controls in Breath of the Wild for the bow aiming so it's like I, I know how that feels like and that feels really really nice you get your large aiming into the area and you can sort of do your fine adjustments with the gyro but it feels like in Splatoon you're intended to do most of your aiming with the gyro because the way that the stick moving left and right goes it's it's a lot bigger movements instead of going from like here to here it's more like here to here and so like 
you're going to use gyro if you want to get in between those two points. And in, in addition to that, with the motion controls on, up and down doesn't work on the control stick. You're going to use gyro exclusively to do your up and down aiming. And it just takes a bit to get used to. It's, it's a very different from even the experience of using gyro to aim in using the bow in Breath of the Wild. It's a very specific thing that it's like, I, okay, I don't know, if, I don't know. And you, you, as you play more, you'll sort of like get the hang of it. But like, it definitely took a while for me to like figure out even how some of that worked. Like it took me a while to figure out that up and down doesn't do anything on the control stick. It's, it's not, I want to say it's unintuitive, it's not typical, it's a very, it's own thing. Even like the types of weapons are a lot different than what you see in, in any other shooter because you're using paint and so you have brushes, you have paint rollers, you have paint buckets, things you wouldn't see in a traditional shooter, but also all these things have a lot shorter range than, you know, a gun that shoot bullets because it's a glob of paint. It has more weight and less propulsion than a bullet does. You know, there are certain weapons that I've messed around with and it's like, I don't like this one. <laughs> I don't like this one because it feels like it's supposed to shoot further or whatever. And I've mostly seemed to have settled into playing roller as of right now. I'm going to still continue to experiment and like see what feels nice. But what I've mostly been playing is the paint roller uh, because that is sort of one that feels correct in how I play it. I'm sure I'll end up finding something else that I like as well. But uh, you unlock weapons slowly, uh, uh, kind of slowly. So it takes time to unlock weapons so that you can try new weapons, etc., etc. The other like negative that I have, the first one being the gyro taking some time to get used to is I did have a handful of disconnections and like it's not as much as I've heard that Splatoon can be in terms of like internet connectivity problems but I did DC a handful of times while playing mostly I think in lobbies not like while in a match and if I remember correctly in Splatoon, lobbies are server-side and matches are peer-to-peer, -peer, so that might be because I have pretty decent internet here, and so it's less likely for me to disconnect. But, like, I've had weird connection issues with some other games, so I don't know. It all really just depends. Netcode is its own beast when, when it comes to programming, so, like, I don't know exactly how all that works. But I just do know that I have had a handful of disconnections. But yeah, uh, Splatoon 3 is a pretty cool game from what I've played so far. I will keep playing it, obviously, and I, you know, I don't know how frequently, because I think it takes a bit more focus than some of the other games that I play, uh, just because of, like, how different it is. Um, I don't have the sort of muscle memory to just go like, yeah, gonna, you know, shoot, play a shoot game. I have to, I'm still sort of learning all of that because it's so different of a environment than a Call of Duty or a Halo or whatever. So I'm going to keep playing it, trying to keep learning it. I'm only like level six or something. So I haven't gotten very far in terms of leveling despite all the time. And I don't seem to win very often in Turf Roller. I should probably go through the single player and see if that helps me with the basics probably one of the next things that I'll do. Anyway, I started rambling a bit here, so we'll just get to the part that matters. This game passes tryout. I, as I was saying, I'm going to play more of it. I, I like it. I like the whole vibe of it. I like being able to sort of, I like games that let you dress up. So I've been sort of, I've not had a lot of options yet, but I've been sort of figuring out my style a little bit because that's a thing that I like to do in games is dress up. I have a whole like Animal Crossing video, I think, click the card, uh, you can see that one, that I was talking about dressing up and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I had to say about the game. Let's get to the end of it here. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. If you, uh, go to the description, you find links to all sorts of places. I got a Twitter, Patreon, Bandcamp, Redbubble, etc., etc. Go to those places and do what you do there. 
subscribe if you want to keep with us and other shows. Uh, doing this show, I've stopped doing the covers, but those are out there. There's a playlist. Check those out. Um, I've been doing Let's Plays pretty, uh, pretty frequently. Check all the stuff out I do. I do a lot of stuff on the channel, so click subscribe and, you, get, and uh, you can see those when they come out. Share the video. Leave a comment. Do the things, do the things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!